Angel. Starring Annie Barge and Marshall Thompson. Created by Jess Oppenheimer. Brought to you by Post. Start your day a little bit better with a little bit better cereal. Fresh from Post. Dr. Matthews' office. Uh, this is uh, Mrs. Smith speaking. Oh, good morning, Mrs. Smith. Oh, good morning. Um, I just got a bill this morning uh, for $10 from Dr. Matthews, and, uh, well, I think it's a mistake. Well, that's quite correct, according to my records, Mrs. Smith. I did not even see the dentist yet. Look, my holy shit, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you had an appointment with the doctor last week. We have a rule that unless reasonable notice is given for cancellations, there must be a minimum charge. The rule is printed on a sign on the door, right under, keep smiling. <laughs> I, I, I did not make a cancellation. I was there. You were an hour late, Mrs. Smith. That's the same thing. Yeah, but I told you why I was late, and I was very sorry. Well, I'm sorry too, Mrs. Smith, but rules are rules. Well, what about the rules that say you don't get something for nothing? <laughs> Dr. Matthews' time is very valuable, and he must be compensated for it. Now, we tried desperately to do without the rule, but so many people canceled that the office was empty half the time. Now, you do have an appointment with us tomorrow at 3 o'clock. Will we see you then? Yes. But if I did not have a hole in my cavity, you would never see me again. Quel honte, alors, dites là, alors qu'il m'a même rien fait. Moi, je ne le ferai pas. C'est du cancérisme. Moi, j'appellerai ça du cancérisme. I don't know what you said, but I'm glad it wasn't in English. Look at this, Johnny. Johnny, look at this. The dentist wants me to pay ten dollars for not doing nothing. Well, he must have done something. Dentists don't charge for not doing nothing. Well, Dr. Matthews does. Because I was an hour late, he did not take me. And now I must give ten dollars. Honey, you weren't late. I dropped you off at the office on the way to work. <laughs> I remember you were so scared that I practically had to push you out of the ca... Uh-oh. Angel, did you go straight upstairs? Of course I go straight upstairs. Mm, then what? Then I go straight downstairs. <laughs> I was nervous, Johnny. I was nervous. It was my first visit to an American dentist. Well, honey, they're the same as French dentists. That's why I was nervous. <laughs> oh, I see. So we don't pay the bill, huh, Johnny? So we do pay the bill. You are on his side against my side. Angel, a professional man's time is valuable. That's all he has to sell. Now, right is right. But right is not right when it's wrong. Now, Dr. Matthews, he cheats your wife and you defend him. Well, you are as bad as he is. Et moi, je la ferai pas, c'est cette note de 10 dollars, parce que c'est une vraie honte de faire ça aux gens, compris? Oh, thank you for asking, darling. I'm feeling fine. That's not what I said. Yeah, but that's the beauty of not speaking French. I can give it any interpretation I like. Goodbye, darling. I gotta go to work. <laughs> Good afternoon, Mrs. Smith. Good afternoon. If you notice, I'm here at 3 o'clock on the dotted line. <laughs> yes, that's very fine. The doctor will be with you in just a few minutes. I do hope there are no hard feelings about the bill. Well, my husband said he's right. So I guess there are no hard feeling about it. Fine. <laughs> but there are no soft feelings either. <laughs>
to see the doctor for almost an hour now. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. Doctor's had several emergencies and he's running a little late. It'll be just a few minutes now. Yeah, but I cannot wait any more minutes. People are coming home for dinner and I have things to do. I must leave now. Oh, well, uh, could you come in tomorrow at the same time? Yes, that will be perfect. Fine. I'm terribly sorry about the delay, but these things do happen. I hope you understand. Oh, of course. I understand perfectly. Here you are. Oh, what's this? My bill. <laughs> The doctor charges me ten dollars for his time, so I charge him ten dollars for mine. <laughs> I'm sure you're joking. Oh, no, I'm sure I'm not. I have a word that unless reasonable notice is given for cancellation, there must be a minimum charge. <laughs> well, I never heard of such a thing. My time is valuable and I must be confiscated for it. <laughs> You're serious. Oh, yes, I'm very serious. Well, we'll see what doctor says about this. Fine, I see what he says with you. <laughs> Excuse the interruption, doctor, but I have a bill that I think you should see. A bill? Well, not now, Miss Richmond. And now, doctor. <laughs> well, who's it from? Mrs. Smith. She missed her appointment last week and we charged her. And today, you miss your appointment. You charge for your time, and I charge for mine. <laughs> Cute. <laughs> How about this, Harry? She's not <laughs> joking. <laughs> oh, sure she is. Oh, sure she isn't. I explained about the delay, and I told her that you were sorry. Oh, I'm very sorry, too. But rules are rules. Now, one hour I have spent here, and I must be paid for it, exactly the same as you are paid. <laughs> Mrs. Smith, surely you recognize the difference. I'm a professional man. I am a professional housewife. <laughs> Look, I spent four years in college and four years at dental school to get where I am. That's eight years of study. Oh, I studied for 23 years to get where I am. <laughs> Anybody can be a housewife. Can you? <laughs> well, I'll leave this to you, Doctor. Uh, no, Miss Richmond, no, no. <laughs> Mrs. Smith, you could ask anybody. They'll tell you that I'm... Okay. <laughs> what do you think? Even my time is valuable as his time. <laughs> Me. Why should she be paid for her time? I have a house to clean, food to buy, dinner to cook for company. Now, can I do this when I'm sitting here? <laughs> now, let's be reasonable about this. But I am being reasonable. I charge you no more than you charge me. You have no right to charge me anything. I think I do have a right, and that is my bill. Now, if you would excuse me, I must go home to the office. The world's richest coffee is now an instant coffee. New instant Uban. Richest because, like famous ground Uban, it's blended with rare aged coffee beans. See the difference. The aged beans Uban adds to its blend are mellowed month after month to a bronze richness before roasting. Most coffee beans are roasted still green, good but can't compare in richness. Uban, blended with coffee beans that are aged, just as vintage wine, the choicest cheese, the finest steak are aged. New instant Uban with aged coffee beans added to its blend. World's richest coffee, Uban. Pennies more in price, the premium coffee of General Foods. Enjoy it soon. Deep, dark, delicious Uban. Mmm, anything I can do? Yeah. If you run a 
cross and hors d'oeuvre you don't want, maybe the rest of us can divide it. <laughs> I only had a couple. Oh, George, you've eaten half the plate. I can see where you rearrange the spaces. <laughs> All right. Hi, John. Uh, Why are you so late? <laughs> Sorry to hold things up, kids, but... Uh... Just as I was leaving the office, uh, I got a phone call from Dr. Matthews. Oh, he, he told you about the bill I gave him, eh? Oh, yes, indeed. He told me. You gave the dentist a bill? Yes. The other day, I was late for an appointment, and he charged me $10. But today, he was late, so I charged him right back. <laughs> That's wonderful. Yeah, but Dr. Matthews didn't think so. He was hopping mad. What do we care? We care because I have a dental appointment in the morning. <laughs> now, Angel, a joke is a joke. I agree, Johnny, and that is not a joke. <laughs> Honey, a housewife can't charge for her time. Of course she can. Just because we don't get paid by the hour doesn't mean our time isn't valuable. Oh, cut it out, Susie. Being a housewife is the easiest job there is. <laughs> That's a laugh. If it was the easiest job there is, you'd have it. Now, wait a minute. No one is denying that wives are not valuable. But in terms of money, uh, your time wouldn't be worth that of a medical man or a professional man or a craftsman. How about a fruit picker? <laughs> yeah, that's more like it. Uh, unskilled labor. <laughs> <laughs> Honey, I was only kidding. We can take care of that right away. Uh, I hope you talk to your wife about that bill. <laughs> Put away the tools of torture, Doctor. <laughs> Just don't pay it. I'll handle her. Don't worry. <laughs> you know, if a thing like that ever got out, we'd be in real trouble. <laughs> Excuse me, Doctor. Could you see this gentleman right away? It's an emergency. Uh, oh, uh, oh, yes. Yes, of course. Uh, come right in. Uh, what seems to be the trouble? Uh, are you Dr. Matthews? Yes, I am. That's all I wanted to know. Nice meeting you, Doc. What? <laughs> a summons! <laughs> You're hereby ordered to appear in court and answer a complaint by Mrs. John Smith! <laughs> Sit back in the chair, Smith. <laughs> well, uh, I'd like to talk to my wife about this, Doctor. Come back here, Smith. Well, there's no sense in working when you're upset, Doctor. I'll, I'll make another appointment in a, a year or so. Smith? <laughs> Angelique, this time you have gone too far. Well, Johnny, I, I've not gone any place. I've been right here all day. You know what I mean. I was there when Dr. Matthews got the summons. Now, just what are you trying to do? Johnny, it is a matter of principle. Now, sit down. You're just in time for dinner. Never mind. Now, listen, you are not going to court. Oh, yes, I am. And I have an attorney. An attorney? Who? Me. <laughs> then let me do that in the court of lit little clams. Small claims. Yeah, a small claims court. <laughs> now, here, you sit down. What would you like for dinner? Never. What's this? As a menu. A menu? Yes, I, I hope we have something you like. Vegetable soup. Cup, 25 cents. Bowl, 40 cents. <laughs> Bowl, you get twice as much for just 15 cents more. <laughs> Roast beef, a dollar and a half. That is most reasonable, eh? Huh? Now look, Angel, this is my home, and the food in that kitchen is food I paid for. Oh, but the price on the menu only includes the time it takes me to buy it, cook it, serve it, and wash the dishes. <laughs> Very amusing. Very amusing. What about uh, cleaning, housework, and laundry? Oh, that, that is on this bill here. <laughs> After the 
great debate last night. We unappreciated housewives decided to put our services on a paying basis. Yes. Maybe now you will realize how valuable our time is. No. Okay, Susie. I give up. What is this bill from Susan Carpenter Industries? <laughs> that is your weekly statement. A weekly statement? For what? Uh, George, uh, it seems like the Gold Dust Twins have come up with a new wrinkle. <laughs> they are now charging for everything they do. People get paid for their work. Why should not we? Well, if you think I'm going to pay you for this... Hold it, hold it, hold it, George. I've already been down that road. <laughs> you know, this can work both ways. <clears throat> if they're going to charge for their services, we have a right to charge them rent. Yeah. And board, too. How do you like that? Fine. Of course, we may take our room and board elsewhere. <laughs> This whole thing's ridiculous. I, I say, let's forget it, huh? Boy, Susie, you never talked this way when you were trying to trap a husband. I was never out to trap a husband. Oh, yeah? Then why did your kid brother always call you Daniel Boone? <laughs> that was a family joke. Well, they didn't start laughing until the wedding. <laughs> I suppose you were trapped, too. No, I really wanted to get married, I think. Uh, maybe you fellas would like to try the single life again. Is that an offer? Yes. <laughs> maybe then you will see how much you need us. You know, it's just possible that you may need us a little more. It's also just possible that we may need you a little less. Mm. <laughs> well, John, I'd say this is a good time to find out who needs who the most. George, I'd say you're absolutely right. Can um, we set up bachelor quarters at your house? Delighted. I'll send for my clothes in the morning. When you girls have had enough, you can call. And when you boys have had enough, you can crawl. <laughs> That's good, Susie. Very good. Oh, sorry. They've gone. So they've gone. They'll be back. Oh, yes. They'll be back. <laughs> when? <laughs> Gee, boss, this bread box is impregnable. Oh, yeah? That's using your head. Now, where's the dynamite? You idiot! Oh, no! It's Raid! Yes, Raid, house and garden bug killer. For both indoors and outdoors. Raid hunts bugs down like radar. Sweeps flies and mosquitoes from the air. Attacks roaches and ants as they crawl. And kills them dead. Kills all kinds of bugs indoors. Outdoors, Raid House and Garden Bug Killer wipes out insects that attack your flowering plants. Even protects evergreens. So get Raid. It smells good, but it really kills them dead. Created by Johnson's Wax. Judgment reserved. See the clerk for another date on the calendar. Annie, you've got to stop looking for John. Now, you've got to give this case your full attention. Remember, we're fighting for a principal. Did Joan of Arc fail the people of France? No, but she did not have a husband that stay away all night. <laughs> I'm so worried about him. Oh, here they come. Now, come speak to them. <laughs> Next case, Smith versus Matthews. I'm Dr. Matthews, Your Honor. And I am Mrs. John Smith, Your Honor. And I'm also the attorney of Mrs. John Smith. And we are both sweaty. <laughs> Now, your complaint charges that uh, Dr. Matthews owes you the sum of $10 for services rendered. Is that true? 
Well, uh, actually, Your Honor, it is for services not rendered. Your service is not rendered? If it please the court, Your Honor, since Mrs. Smith seems to have some slight language problem, may I state the exact situation? Any objection, Mrs. Smith? Well, maybe I don't see what happened very well, but I know what happened very well. <laughs> and if that is not what he tells you, I have plenty of objections. <laughs> now, I've seen many lawyers show on television, so watch out. <laughs> Go ahead, Dr. Matthews. Well, last week, Mrs. Smith had a dental appointment with me, and she missed it. And she was billed the minimum charge, a rule clearly posted in my office. I am familiar with that rule. She made another appointment. On that day, my schedule was interrupted by several emergencies, and she was kept waiting an hour. An unfortunate but understandable delay. However, she then turned around and billed me for the exact amount I charged her. <laughs> what the? <hell? laughs> Mrs. Smith thinks this is quite serious. Yes, uh, obviously she does. <laughs> my time is worse every bit the same as his time. Your Honor, professional men have established fees for their services. I am well aware of that fact, Doctor. Yes, and it's about time housewives were given the same recognition. That's good, Susie. That's very good, Susie. Thank you. Order, order. And who are you, please? Just another housewife who's trapped behind the iron apron. <laughs> Your Honor, this whole charge is preposterous and purely vindictive in spirit. It should be regarded as nothing more than a malicious prank. Well, I must say I've never had a case quite like this one before. She asks $10 an hour for her time. It doesn't seem too much to me when you think of all the many things I do. Mrs. Smith, <laughs> let's talk in specifics. Well, I'm sorry, Your Honor. I only talk French and English. <laughs> The case is really cut and dry. When a patient makes an appointment with a professional man, he is contracting for that part of the man's time. Now, if in treating his patient, he is regrettably but unavoidably delayed, there is no breach on his part. Before I pass judgment, let me point out that in the county of Los Angeles... Excuse me, uh, Your Honor. I would like to speak on behalf of the plaintiff, if I may. I can speak on myself, thank you. Who are you? I am her husband. Now, don't listen to him, Your Honor. He's mad on me. Your Honor, this case is community property. All right, go ahead. Are you married, Your Honor? Yes. <clears throat> well, sir, if you disregard Mrs. Smith's complaint, it means that you believe that housewives deserve nothing for their labors. You'll be saying that your own wife is of no value. Oh, wait a minute. Don't drag me into this. I haven't said one word about my wife or anyone's wife. Yes, now don't you go twisting things. I'm a married man myself. <laughs> no one questions the value of a housewife. They're, they're wonderful in their place. But doctor, you do question the value of her time. Now, will you agree that it is worth something? Well, yes. Yeah, but how much? <laughs> Aside from all the jobs she does, uh, what price would you put on tenderness, understanding, comfort, love? Is $10 really such an exorbitant figure for all of that? Your Honor, a decision against me would have tremendous repercussions. Your Honor, a decision against me is like saying that housewives are worthless. Oh, you fixed me up just great. <laughs> Go over there and sit down and let me consider this. Your Honor, if you decide in her favor, patients will begin charging their doctors every time they're a few minutes late. This would create a terrible problem. Why, a decision like this would be... Oh, be quiet. Can't you see I'm trying to think? <laughs> As you so eloquently said, Mr. Smith, what price would you put on tenderness, understanding, comfort, and love? Do you really only want me to charge him $10? No. No, it's not 
nearly enough. <laughs> Not even hundred or thousand. It's priceless. Well, then it seems to me, perhaps, since we are dealing in a commodity that uh, cannot be purchased at any price, that we can, if Mrs. Smith agrees, dismiss the case without prejudice. What do you say, Mrs. Smith? What did you say, Your Honor? <laughs> well, uh, in effect, we'll, we'll just forget about it. You won't win and you won't lose. Well, uh, will he win or lose? No. No one will ever know who was right and who was wrong. Professional men can go on being in business, and husbands can go on being husbands in peace. We will just have established that there are certain human relationships that cannot be measured in terms of money and should never be allowed to be threatened by it. Well? Well, I still don't really know what you said, Your Honor. But uh, I want to go over and kiss my husband, so I say, all right. <laughs> That is for the cute attorney. That is for the priceless wife. One day, Christopher Wheat was sitting in front of a haunted house eating post sugar crisp when. Help! Help! I'm in Kenya! I'd like to help. You can help, Chris. You've been eating sugar crisp. They're made of wheat to help make you strong, give you muscles. Yep, gives you the muscles of wheat. For breakfast, it's dandy. For snacks, it's like candy. Start your day a little bit better. Start your day with sugar crisp from Post. Sugar and honey make it a sweet treat. Get the treat with strength of wheat. Fresh from Post. Post sugar crisp. Angel has been brought to you by Post, the cereals that start your day a little bit better with a little bit better cereal, fresh from Post. the zany antics of Spike Jones and all the gang Monday night over most of these same stations.